Hello all, thank you for coming this afternoon. It's a beautiful day outside. I'm pretty sure any one of you would love to be outside in the sun, including me. But this afternoon, we have something very important to talk about. Being a pathfinder, you deal with a lot of children, and probably some of you are parents, and you also have your children where you also have to deal with them in a different aspect of their uh, growth and development. My name is Colleen Nord, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a mother, a teacher, <laughs> a wife, a master guide, um, what else? A cook, everything you can think of, I do. My husband is here with me, Harry Nord. Um, he also is a master guide, my partner in crime, my partner in Christ, and my partner in raising our three daughters. So, Talking about adolescents, oh my gosh, we know a lot about that. Um, why are we talking about adolescents? Why are we talking about the way they develop? There's a lot going on in young children. All of you know that when they're just born, they're so cute, wonderful. By the time they're two or three years old, we have a different personality developing. Now, by the time they reach to 10 years old, we also have a different level. So at 10 years old, we see them come out, and all of a sudden, one day, they wake up, and, Mom, I'm not feeling well. For girls, you know what I'm talking about. They're growing up. For boys, they go to bed, and the next thing, they wake up, Good morning, Mom. How are you? <laughs> now, we definitely want to know why those changes happen. So we're going to talk about adolescence. The time of growing up. OK, how many young men? Do I have anyone in this room who's 15? Good. 16? <laughs> Great. I'm 12. <laughs> 18? 19? 21 years old? Good. Wow. Jordan. Yes, sir. How does it feel being 21? It feels exciting. Exciting. Can you tell us, how, when you were 10 years old versus now you're 21, what happened in those period of time? Uh, when I was 10 years old, I felt like everything took a long time. <laughs> everything took a long time? Everything. Yes, and now you're 21. And time seems to be speeding up. Speeding up. That is so true. Well, this is the time that growing up from a child to adult world, it's different. So much thing happened. Now, from birth all the way to 10 years old, when you're just born, people think that, oh my gosh, they grow up so quick. Now, think about by the time they are 12 to 15. So, time of growing up is a time that so much things happen. Their emotion, their hormones, um, the fight for everything. Things that normally the parents will play with, you know, talk about, didn't really bother them. Mind you, I have three of them. They all three, three of them, all three are girls. No boys, thank God Almighty. Nothing wrong against boys, nothing, nothing's wrong. But in my teaching experience, it seems to me the principal did that purposely. Every year I had more boys in my classroom than girls. I'm like, man, this year again, the boys are sweet, kind, but whoa, do they required time, lots of time. Nothing against you men and young men, nothing. It's just, that's the nature. That's how God created you guys to be. So, now, from adolescence can start from the age of nine. It start at nine all the way to 18, and you find some of them, for them it start at 12 all the way to 25. Jordan said, by the time he was 10 to 21, when he was 10, things was taking too long. Now he's 21, things just going out of control. Why is that? Several things happen. Well, 
from the age of 10 years old, 12, 14, now they're in high school, middle school, there's a growth period that took place. The brain is getting bigger. Basically, by the time a young man or young girls, it's 14 all the way to 16 years old, half of their body grow in weight. Their body just, they're not. They don't wear size zero anymore. Now they start wearing size 12, 10, 14. Then their brain also expand. Now they start to figure it out, what am I going to do with my life? What do I want to study? What school I want to go to? What girl I want to date? And all of a sudden you see they start having beard. And when they see those young girls walking around, they want to talk to them. The young girls feel the same way. Now, why is it important for us to understand that development? Why do we need to know what happened in their body between the time of eight all the way to 10, 12, 18, or 21? Because the changes that happen so quick kind of knock them off, and that's what they call hot blood, um, hot blood stages, yes. Um, we have three girls. My oldest one is 21. She is in college now. She is a senior. Although she's 21 years old, um, there are times she come home, she knows everything what she's doing. I don't need the help. I know what I'm doing. Um, we're talking about because she has one class that she needs to take in order for her to graduate and to take her um, medical examination entrance, and we were talking about, she said, I've been on that wedding list since March. I'm tired of waiting, da, 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 da. I said, well, did you call the instructor? Did you call um, the academic dean? No, can you call them for me? I said, why? But, oh, you can do it. I said, why can you? <laughs> she said, but mom. I said, yes, Jazzy, you're 21, you can do that. But what am I gonna tell them? So, this is, I know what I'm doing. Now I need your help. Can you please help me? So there is something that is not right there because the brain expands so quick. Things happen so fast. They really don't have time to process everything. Yet they want to be independent. Yet I need mommy to help me. I can't do this. I'm scared. So we talk about several things. Now, young people have a way of telling us how they feel and, and how we should respond it. This new generation, everything is sensitive. You hurt my feelings. You don't have feelings as an adult. I do. Because I'm supposed to be respected I'm supposed to make that decision, but I don't know how, but my feeling is hurting. I was reading a book about um, the stage of growing up, and I find out, now I have a 13-year-old. The other day, she came to me and she said, Mom, you don't have to do this for me. You know I can do this. You don't have to. I said, how are you going to do it? I got this figured out. So, and then remember, dawn on me, yes. Is that hormone, that thing, her mind is going up so quick. She thinks she knows what she wants to do, but she cannot do it. And later on, 15 or 20 minutes later, um, I think I need your help. I said, I thought you could do it. I thought I can figure it out, but I don't think I can. So then again, it's just that stage. So now let's talk about um, why is... Um, they, why they behave certain ways. Because us as parents, we don't understand them because we wake up all of a sudden, they're screaming, they're yelling about everything, and you start asking yourself, is there any that little girl the other day I just changed diaper or little boy? I thought we just had a conversation yesterday. They start being disrespectful. They start asking well, you don't have to go to prom. You don't have to drop me off. I can do that myself. They start driving. And the friends, now it's all about, because of their image, their parents, it's all about their friends. They want the friends to know that I got this figured out. 
I don't want to talk to my parents. You understand me. I want you to help me out. We parents really have a hard job to do. I do believe this is the stage when you see your kids coming up, one day they say one thing, the next day they say something, that's when you need to sit down and figure it out, what's going on up here? Because what happened is, from age 12 to 14, girls basically look different. Some of them, they, the body is bigger, but the brain for some reason is getting smaller. No, no, seriously. Because you say something and all of a sudden you feel like I'm talking to an eight year old, not a 12 or 14 year old. At the same time, because they grow up, some of them grow in a certain stage, like the body wise, but responsibility, um, knowing the right thing to do is not there. And psychology said the reason being, some of them, their body just uh, respond to the growth that's going on in the body, but the mind takes a little bit longer. Then they f um, there's a study that was done at uh, John Hemskin um, University, and they said it takes young men two to three years to basically develop the, what you call maturity from the age of 15 all the way to 18. And the reason behind that is just because you'll find a girl who's 15 can reason the same way with a young man who's already 18 years old. Girls, nothing wrong against you guys. It's just because we girls, we grow faster. So what does that mean? A young man is 18 years old, according to the United States of America, not where I'm from in France. You have to be 21 to take certain decision. 18 years old, that young man can be a father. We find young girls at the age of 12, even 10, can be a mother. Now, when you have a 10-year-old, the body's already ready to be a mom, but mentally, is not there to even make decision, what do you do about this? And that's when parents at that moment, even counselors, church, need to really take time to explain to them, your body may be acting this way, however, your brain is not at the same stage. This is what you need to do. The next thing they, talk in, they also talk about is, um, the sociological, I mean, they very, what we call social butterfly. They want to interact with everybody. They want to let everybody to know that, oh, guess what? I'm ready to date. I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to do that. But the brain is saying, mm-mm, you're not. The body is saying something different. We can give. We can think about the different way our kids eat that caused that development of the body quicker than it should have been. And they also, there's a research that was done at Harvard University. They compare children who eat certain way versus kids that eat certain way. They find out the kids are exposed with more food that have hormones, that have all these things in them. Their body develops faster than kids that eat um, kosher food. They took two different sets of mice for some reason and they compare it. It was tremendous where the one that they were giving organic or kosher food, that's how they call it, and the one that was not, it's different. Now, where is all that hormones come from? Those of the kids who eat the chicken, drinking the milk and all that, and they find out that when you see a child who's 10 years old, their body develops so quick there's a delay in the brain. Now, think about, again, a 10-year-old who's supposed to be playing with dolls, still um, doing stuff what 10 years old is doing, but now have a body of 
15, 16, and 18 years old, there's a lot of things they don't know. There's a lot of things that other people that are older than them can fool them, can tell, make them believe, but it's not. And that's when parents, counselors, need to step in and explain to them what is going on and what they need to do. Remember I talk about hard-blooded? Um, once again, I have three children, <laughs> three girls. I have one of them who have a temper just like I am. The truth of the matter is when you want something, you have to go and get it. That one she doesn't like, she, she doesn't like to wait. If there's something she needs to get done, mom, can we go do it now? It's just like constantly, let's get it done, let's get it done. Until she get it done, she will not stop. And one thing I've noticed about her, we were talking about, she just started college, so we were talking about classes and things like that. And I said to her, I don't think you should take that class because that class is not going to help you. Well, what do you want me to take then? That's what I want to take. I said, oh, we need to calm down. I said, I can see your blood. It's so hot right now. It's about to pop out of your head. And she looked at me. She said, yeah. Then again, you're going to take over my schedule. I can do this. And I said, you are not being defeated. I'm just helping you. Okay. And she turned around. But in true reality, when my husband and I sat down with her, we realized that, no, that's not the class that you need. You need to go back and we track what you were doing. And then later on, she came back. Oh, that's what it is. I said, yes, we've been there, done that. We also have the T-shirt to prove for it. We are the one paying for the bills. You just sit down and let us drive you a little bit. And then when you're ready, we're going to give you the wheel. You can take it and go. So, education, and they want to do education. Some of them want when they reach that time. At the same time, we're going to find some of them. They are so consumed by their body size, by what their friends are doing, or what their friends is telling them. A research that was done at um, CDC, actually, they realized that a lot of these kids, when they cannot do what psychologically or physically, because of their body, hormone, the growth that is going on, they are depressed. Some of them will just put all of their energy toward education, sports, or their image. And when all that is not so working well for them, they just go into drugs. If it is not drugs, they just put all the energy into how they look. And the next things, you know, like they said, about 75% of young um, adolescents who do not, um, for some reason, go to the depression stage, a lot of them end up being in medication for depression for the rest of their lives. Some of them, because of taking drugs, of not being, um, what you might call it, they are their own boss. No one can tell them what to do. So they wish to the point that now it's so much pressure on them. They need to do this. They need to accomplish that. Everybody's telling them, you should have done that by now. So that's when everything tumbled down. So the depression went, the drugs, um, even going into drinking alcohol. Now, parents cannot tell them anything anymore. Friends cannot even satisfy what they want to do. So I'm going to move up a little bit quicker because we did talk about the different stage of adolescence. Um, we want to talk about, um, I did talk about from 80% of girls, you know, they have drama going on from right to left. Um, I'm going to move up to the next stage about, I'm sorry. From what I said so far, do you guys have any question about the different stage? I mentioned that um, adolescents can go from 10 all the way to 18, finish at 18, and it can start from um, 10, 12 to until 25 years of age. 
Now, that's where I want to go. We want to talk about, let's talk about the different, um, in the Bible, we know there's a lot of them that went to different ways, just like our kids these days. So let's take a look of adolescents in the Bible. And let's compare them and see what makes them successful in certain area of their lives and then why they did certain things. Then again, we're going to focus on the growth. It is a very dramatic growth that happened between a period of four to six years or some of them between four to even eight years. I was talking to a young lady. Um, she came to my office and asked for um, counsel about... Um, she wanted to go into the military and also wanted to go um, back to college. And I said, did you know, what do you know about the military? What were you doing in college? And to the course of the conversation, I realized I'm talking to a 22-year-old with a mind of 16 or 17-year-old. Because truly, she didn't really have an idea of what she wanted to do because it was always what her friend said. And I said, have you sit down with your parents and talk to your parents about what you want to, well, they don't know anything about that. I said, how do you know that? Well, because they don't. They don't appreciate what I do. Everything I do, they have an issue with it. I said, well, give me an example. And she said, well, my friends, my friends and I, when we go out and my dad, you know, you know how they go. I said, no, I don't. And she said, well, you cannot bring a boy home and spend the night. I said, but why would you want to bring a boy home to spend the night? But we're friends. I said, okay. Um, I said, what kind of friends? Explain to me. I said, there's different type of friends. She said, well, nothing's going on. We're just good friends. He doesn't have a place to crash that night. I was going to let him spend the night in my bedroom. I said, well, who paid the house? She said, my mom and dad. I said, who pay for your tuition? Well, you know, and then the long story. And that's when I realized I am talking to a 16 or 17 years old, but age-wise and body-wise, 23 years old. I said, this is what you might consider. Take a chance in your parents. Sit down with them. Tell them what's going on right up here. He said, well, they're going to criticize me. I said, well, as a mom, right now I can tell you a lot of your decision, your parents have the right to criticize them. They are not being good. And she looked at me. She said, you think so? I said, mm -hmm. I said, let me tell you this. I have a 21-year-old in my household. I pay the bills, I say. I tell her what to do and when to do it and when not to do it. I said, guess what? Because right now she doesn't know really what she's doing. All she wants is her independence, but she doesn't know the consequence of independence. I said, that's exactly what you did. You wanted to be independent, but you don't even know the consequence right now. You cannot even relate with the consequence. He said, I didn't even know that. But how do you know that? I said, because parents know. He said, okay. I said, if I were you, I would go to my parents, ask for forgiveness and see if they can pay for school for you again. But you're going to have to make a promise with them. She said, what is that? Follow the rules. Don't you think I'm too old for that? Physically, yes. But mentally, psychologically, you need your parents. They might help you. So, and a few days later, I received a call from the mom and said, thank you, thank you. She doesn't listen to nobody. That's when I'm learning more and more. Now, all of a sudden, I get involved. They asked me to be her mentor. I said, how did I get myself into that? But that's where we are right now. So let's take a look. If you have your Bible, even if you don't have your Bible, we can go to the slide, and then you can see. What happened to Cain? He, was, he had an issue, right? Did not want to listen. And what happened as a consequence? Making the wrong choice. Abel, on the other hand, what happened? He lived a short life, but Abel was able to do what? 
he was able to listen. Because most of the problem with our young adolescents is the fact that they don't listen. And here's the reason. It's not because they purposely want to do that. It is the changes that is happening in their body. And the changes telling them, Dear, guess what? You are right up here. But in true reality, it is not. Now let's take a look at, I have several of them. Isaac. We all know what happened to Isaac, right? Ooh. Where you at? No, Rebecca. Ha. Huh. Another young man. Jacob. Now, I find Jacob was very interesting. Remember we talk about adolescent age, all they want to do is their friends, it's I, my friends, and I. Not the parents, I, my friends, and I. It's all about I, I, I. I can do this, I know this. Here's Miss Leah. Could not live to anyone's expectation, huh? Rachel. <laughs> I find that pretty interesting. The girl that everyone wanted to have. Joseph. Miriam. Moses. Mr. Simpson. When I was doing that, I had to do a Google search because I wanted to see if there was any, um, is it our generation or is it because um, our kids make the wrong decision or just because the time that we lived in? In true reality, when I did that search, a lot of those youth in the Bible have similar situation, have similar problem that our kids these day is having. Samuel. You see, some of them, they pay attention and some don't. Now you ask yourself, why? Um, I was at a retreat. Um, actually, it was not a women's retreat. It was a retreat for um, the staff um, and they were talking about the different um, type of um, people we have in our company. And our boss was trying to figure out which one is just more, and he was making a um, little comment about some of us that are, um, you know, we can understand and we are not what you call, oh, you are high maintenance. <laughs> and he was talking about those of us who are high maintenance and some of us that are not high maintenance. And he made a comment, he said, most of you that are high maintenance is just because you guys have a rough upbringing. I said, what? Well, rough upbringing? What is he talking about? So later on, and I asked, I said, oh, Mr. Logan, what are you talking about? Rough upbringing. He said, some of them, they're 45, 60 years old, even 60 years old, they're still acting as a youth. They're not acting as their own age. You may be 45, but yet you act just like you're 21 years old. And it says those, they never finish growing up. For some reason, the growth just stops somewhere and it's locked up with them. 
And it's true. You find some adults that are like that. David. So now, how can we help our young people develop what you call a good adolescent and something that is concrete? How can we help them in the stages when they're going to the different stages of their life from the age of 10 all the way to 21 or 12 to 25? Because some of us will grow at a certain stage. We can be from 10 to 12 our body acting up like 18, 20, but in our mind, we're acting like we are like 10 years old or 12 years old. So there's five, I, I find those positive youth development. For some reason, I think that with that, um, basically, it's a guideline. Um, competence is something that we all need. Now, I had the definition of competence, perception that one has ability and skills. Now, if we can take a look at our young adolescents, some of them that, you know, it, 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 you can find a 10 or 12 year old by the way they act or the way they talk to people, the way they react, you can all, almost think that they are like 16 or 18 years old because of that competence. And competence is not something that you can acquire by yourself. Competence can be acquired in many form and many um, direction. Competence start basically at home. A child cannot be competent. A child cannot have what you call um, good, well, let me don't say that. Because sometimes parents can give kids all they need to do, right direction, um, bring them in church, never lie, always do the right thing, and the kids end up doing something else. Because we have a different forces that's going on. The second one is confidence. For all, let's go back to competence. Competence, finding training and practice in specific skills either academic or in the community slash church. For example, in our churches, the kids go to school, some of them go to a Christian school, and they also have pathfinders. They have good leaders that can help them. But they also have friends. I think the biggest parent's nightmare is who their children hang with or interact with. You see, you and I can go to the same church. We know about the Bible. We know about the Sabbath. We know about a lot of things. We know the right things to do. Yes, we pass that on to our children. However, what happened in your house and what happened in someone else's house can be a big clash in your child development. Because with the young lady I mentioned earlier, I have a 21-year-old. When the girls were in high school, my husband and I said, no dating until you're in college. We know it was going to be hard. So what we did, we get the girls involved in different activities in the church. We get them involved in music. We get them involved in, my daughter didn't like sports so much, so we did ice skating. She learned how to play the piano, violin, and we were looking for something in the church that can help us meet that um, demand that we um, put on them. But at that moment, I think we were in Georgia, and we find the Luth Church had a program for young adolescents or youth they have a program. They went to that training. They talked to them about their body development, what's going on, the different stages, what happened in their body, and what God is required of them. And at the end of the program, they did a beautiful ceremony. They had to wear white. In the ceremony, they had to give 
their body to God until the day of marriage. But the ceremony, we know that the ceremony was not going to be enough. We had to be on it. So my husband and I always pray for them, but we talked to the girls. We said, you know what? The decision that you made is beautiful. But guess what? You have an enemy is going to be after you 24-7. You must develop a relationship with Christ. Okay, it goes in this ear. It come out this way. So what we end up doing, it's finding good friends that we know who practices, who believes in the same things that we do to, for our girls to be friends with. Well, in school, you cannot control it. So we come up, we said, no sleeping at nobody's house. You can bring them up here. We will let even their parents come and sleep, but we not let. So when it was time for prom, everybody have a boyfriend or everybody have a friend to go to prom. So my daughter knows that there was no boyfriend. So we went shopping for the dress and all that. I said, you know that you're not going to have a friend to go to prom. She said, I know. I'm just going to go just with my friends. There are several of my friends are not going with friends, with a boyfriend. I said, good. So the day of prom, dress her up, get her ready, beautiful pictures. Lelo, she didn't know. My husband went, got his tuxedo and everything, and my husband escorted her to prom. When she got there, several of her friends said, what? Your dad bought you in? Oh, my goodness. My parents didn't even care. They let me ride with my friends. Now, you cannot tell a child one thing, then you don't make provision for it. You have to give them something else to fall back into it. So when I mention friends, when I mention the development, youth with youth, fire can happen. Things happen. You may say no for this at home. Someone else's parents say, oh, yes, you can do. So finding training and practices, finding people in church that can help your children, or guide them in the right path is very important. Confidence. You must always have confidence in your child. If the child just decided not, you know, for some reason, okay, we all can lie, but we have to find a way to show them that they're confident. When they make decisions, it's sound decision. Think about how you're going to make decisions. Think about in the future. If I make that decision now, how can that impact me later on? So internal sense of self-efficacy and positive self-worth, which young people at that time, that's what they look for. They want to be their own boss. They want to be able to make sound decisions, want to know what they want to do with their life, what career they want to go to, and whom they're going to date, all that. Connection. You have to have positive connection with your parents. Some of you fear a parent. Let me tell you, it is not easy. It is not easy when you have to have a connection with your children because you have to not only do the talk but also do the walk. I met, my gosh, even I met so many people, so many young people that, and I said to them, they says, oh, my parents doesn't care. Oh, they do all that, but they're telling us don't do this, don't do that. I said, oh, okay. I said, but what do you think? They're an adult. They do this, but they said, don't do that. Who do you think they are preserving? Who do you think they are protecting? And they looked at me like, well, I never thought of it that way. I said, yes, I know. They said, don't do this, but they are doing it. I said, think about it. Your mom or dad is watching out for you. Although it's a double standard, but the young person doesn't know that. The mom wants to protect or preserve them. Because why are you telling me don't do it, but you're doing it? And it's the same thing for us as leaders. When you have those young people come to us, when we see them, we must, if we're going to help them grow, don't tell them something that you cannot do or you're not going to do yourself. Character, a sense of right and wrong, integrity, and so I find those five C's, this is one of the things that I do with my children. And I told the girls, this is 
For me, it's a transparency. I'm not going to tell them something that they cannot do. And I told them if they live by that, a lot of their decision making is going to be, it's not going to be perfect all the time, but they will be able to ask themselves three specific questions. I can make that decision right now, but I don't know how it's going to affect me later. It could be that decision going to either mess up my future or is going to end up hindering myself or someone else in the process. Now, you know, with um, growing up, there's what you call um, leadership. Um, I was talking to my 13-year-old, and I said to her, you know, you are growing up right now, but you know, it's hard. She said, I know. I said, why? Because I have to make a lot of decisions and I don't want to make them. I said, well, if you don't make them, then you want me to make the decision for you? No, but it's hard because you don't know what's going to happen. I said, you're right. But if you pray about them or you know what you want to do, I said, every decision you make have a consequence. She said, I know. That's what you always said. I said, no. Before you make a decision, you can ask questions or you can research them or you can ask people who've been there, oh, when you make that decision, how does that feel? Now, she said, but you said don't trust everybody. I said, exactly, you need to come to me. So, growing up in leader, you are a leader. When you grow up, there's certain decisions you're making. So that's where you're not only dealing with what's going on in your head, but you're also dealing how your future is going to end up. So the decision that you make can either impact you later on or um, take you to a different direction. So why um, leadership have a lot of responsibility? Because we either make decisions for ourselves or for someone else. OK. I'm not moving. Okay, we have a little, good, here we go. Um, I mentioned that when we make a decision, it could either impact us or someone else. So I said, you know, decision is a sacred responsibility and therefore it deserves commitment and purposeful development. Um, I remember, um, It was about um, four years ago. I had the decision to make in either working for the company that I work for now or going into a different field. Where I work right now, I deal with a lot of young people. I deal with parents that I talk, every day have to pray because you deal with probably three or four generation curse that you, you, you ask yourself, you're sitting down, hey, does that person have common sense? So when you're dealing with this kind of young person, and now they come with their children, and they have children, and you have to look at, whoa, this is the lives that you are dealing with. I totally have to basically pray. Every Wednesday in our company, we fast and pray because of the people that we deal with. The people that, because of decision that they made in their life or the, when they were growing up and something else happened, you're dealing with all this stuff that they come up with. You are, yourself also feel depressed. So, what exactly happen when you go on behalf of that person, you said, you know what, I know what's going on, and this is what you need to do. Right now, there's a young, there's a family of three children. The young girl, she's only 12, and the mom came to us, basically asked us, but you know what, that should not have happened, but it happened. Um, 
my daughter is 12 years old. She's about to be 13 in September, but there's a great chance that she might be pregnant. Oh, by the way, I was pregnant when I was 15. Decision making. She is an adolescent. She's a young person. Decision making. So I said, so what did you do? I said, have you talked to her when she was younger about, you know, her body's developing, what to do, what not to do? She said, but I don't know. No, no one ever told me about that. So we have a parent class called Parents Ad Advocacy. I find myself teaching parents about the development of their own body in addition to their own children. You see, decision, when you don't know something or you are not ready for it, the way you make the decision can not only impact you, but impact someone else. Let's read Mark 12, verse 28 to 34. I do believe I have that in the slide. If I don't, um, if someone have the Bible, we can read it. Yes. Jordan, since you have your Bible, would you read it for me? Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, first of all commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mm. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So the scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You have spoken the truth. There is one God, and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. But after that, no one dared question him. You see, why do I bring that chapter? Because as leader, we must lead with the heart. We must lead with love. Two commandments. Love God and love your neighbors as yourself. Two questions was asking to God. Two. And Jesus tell them, hey, you know, you love God and you love your fellow men. But when you love your, your fellow men, what does that mean? If you're not going to do something to you for yourself, you cannot do it for the person. Whatever you're going to do for yourself, you must do it for the person. As a leader, when we make decisions, we must make decisions not only because the decision is going to benefit ourselves, but it must benefit someone else. If it doesn't benefit someone else, we go all against what Jesus responded to those, the, uh, the, uh, the young men who asked him that question. So, God, two common men to give us. Love him and love someone else. So, as leaders, as we go out and talk about, as we mentoring with these young people, as we challenge, I'm pretty sure being in Pathfinder, you're going to have kids that 10 years old, 12, they might come with questions. If you have children, think about how would I answer my child? Then when you have that under control, you can go ahead and answer that child. Because if it, the question, the answer that I give you is not good for my own daughter, then therefore he cannot be good for, your, for that child. So we have several questions we need to ask ourselves. There's several questions we can ask when we're dealing with young people and with, um, that are in the adolescent age. Now, is there someone in your life who has modeled extraordinary leadership? The second question, what, sim, what set him or her apart? that make you say this person is a great leader? It is anybody's answer. You can answer. You may not. Yes. They didn't care what I just thought. They didn't care. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't care.
What is one way that you could encourage or connect with your team this week? As it's supposed to be team, he says there. A typo right there. What would you do? What is one way you can do to connect with if, even a child or an adolescent or your team member? Because I know being in Pathfinder direct, be, being a Pathfinder director or a counselor, it is a lot of work. So what can you do? Is there one thing you can do? If there's one thing you can do, one thing I will ask you to remember, these two commandments Jesus talked about. Love God and love that person that you have the opportunity to work with or to talk with. Are there any questions? I know I cover a lot of stuff. I said a lot of stuff. Are there any questions? Yes. So you mentioned something about um, adults who get into that mindset of um, not being able to mature past uh, a certain mental age. I mean, is that something that we can look for while we're yes. you know, being with these children? The question that Jordan asked, I mentioned that there are people who probably in body, they grow up, they look mature, but mind-wise, they are not. And he asked, is there something like that we should look for? Yes, you should. Because at that moment, you can um, find a way to balance that and even bring the person to where they really needs to be. Because we, um, I have dealt with um, even young children, they're small in age. I mean, my gosh, they're so wise. And you're like, wow. You must have some good role model in your life. But at the same time, we have also adults that are 23, 25, that we act or act like a child who's 14 or 12 years old. There are plenty of research out there. And if you're in a situation like that, you can call me and I can give you um, the different tools that you can do with them. One thing that you can do, you have to have respect for their development, body development. At the same time, when you talk to them, you're not going to make them feel that they are, oh, you don't have any common sense, you are a child. But reason to them in a way that you're going to bring them to where they need to be. And always have respect for that person, you know, and the way you ask questions or approach them. Any more questions? Yes. I think one thing we need to keep in mind is if they do act younger than their stated age, they may have gone through trauma at that age. Which is and they may need counseling working through that. Definitely. That is so true. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the school of, um, um, a school, this uh, University of Miami, they, they did a research with 17 um, different group. And one of the group, there was um, um, kids that from different um, culture, kids that from different um, part of the United States. Even there was a group of kids, they compared the group of kids um, from China. And they said, why kids in China are so um, focused? And they compared them with different group. And in true reality, it's not that the kids in China are just so focused. It was not the truth. The truth was, since they were a baby, they'll tell them what to do. This is how you do this. this is, they've been drilling in them, drilling in them. So therefore, they are just like, not all. They basically become uh, a working robot who's been programmed this, to do things. But in the United States, our kids are different. I mean, they grow up with, you know, you give them different options and how to do certain things, that type of things. And they also had a group of um, kids that come from... Um, broken home, and they find out those children, the majority of them, have what you call brain um, trauma. And they find that they may be even three to four years delay in um, their um, ability to think of making critical sound decisions. Most of those kids end up going to, you know, they need um, to go to psychology, um, rehabilitation, or they have to go to what you call always have to have um, different session um, to figure it out how to um, for them to deal with their own issues. Any other questions? Yes. So, for me personally, I think my heart really goes out to the kids who you know you never you never get to have a chance to like make an impact. You know? mm -hmm.
future depends on your childhood and your upbringing. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, any suggestions for cases for any children who seem to be? Um, you have to take into consideration their culture. There's certain culture. Like I said, in France, um, at 21 years of age, that's when I can basically make certain decisions. Um, as far as, um, you know, in the United States, you're 18, 16, you can have a driver's license or you can have your permit. No, that doesn't happen in France. So um, you have to take into consideration the person's culture. There's certain culture that they're not fully developed or being respected until they're probably like 20, 25. And in the United States, we think the kids, the moment they turn 18, they're an adult. In true reality, 18 years old, you're still a child. Um, I dealt with a lot, you know, as a counselor. Um, when I deal with those freshmen coming to college, and you, oh, I said, well, you need your parents to sign that. Oh, no, they don't have to sign that. I can sign it. I'm 18. They are so happy to let you know that they're 18. Now, some of the universities, if you called, your child's already, already 18 or 19 years old, they give you a form that your child had to give you permission. Like, just like Friday, I call and ask something about my 21-year-old daughter. She's a senior, and then we're talking about that class she needs to change. And I call, I says, well, you know what? My daughter been in that wedding list for so long. She need that class to graduate. And the counselor said to me, well, you need your daughter to call us. You don't have no right to call us and ask to change the classes. I said, oh, by the way, I pay. I'm the one who paying for the tuition. If I don't pay for the tuition, you may not have a job. I said, I know it's my daughter. She's 21 years old, but I am the mother. Well, you have to have your daughter call us. I was furious. So, <coughs> we live in a culture <coughs> who give those children so much authority. So when they have issues, problems going on, we don't even know. So therefore, they go to a friend. Does the friends really know? No. Even themselves, they try to figure things out. So yeah, you have to take into in consideration their culture. Culture have a lot to do with how those kids um, make certain decisions. Seems like Ellen White wrote a lot about that. <coughs> yes. Because certain culture, they behave in a different way. The certain culture, if you go to them and said, hey, your child is, um, the body is fully developed and things like that, there's certain things your child should not do, it's a red flag. Yes. Any more questions? Well, thank you for coming. I know I cover a lot of things. If um, you want the PowerPoint presentation and the information, I can send it to them and they can pass it along. Thank you for coming. <laughs>